So the two artworks I chose are Convergence by Jackson Pollock on the left and Battle of Britain by Paul Nash on the right. Both of the artworks are from the 20th century. So we are going to start with the artwork on the left. First, here's some background about the author. In a biography book, Pollock Veiling the Image by Donald Wiggle, it tells of Pollock's early, middle, and later life. Pollock was born on January 28, 1912 in Coding, Wyoming. He lived on a farm with his mother, father, and four brothers. His father was a farmer and also worked for the government, and his mother was an artist. His family would constantly move, so he never stayed in one place for too long. His father and brothers would sometimes take him to Native American reservations, so some people say that his art is influenced by Native Americans. Pollock's father also got him into alcohol, which resulted in him becoming an alcoholic and cut his life short. Pollock started to take interest in art at an early age and had already been set for his career while still in high school. He did struggle in school and got in trouble a lot, even a few times being expelled, but he still managed to graduate high school. Pollock then went to an art school, Art Students League, in New York, where he was taught by Thomas Hart Benton. Benton was very influential on Pollock. There were also others who were very inf influential on him as well. Those people were David Alfaro Siqueiros, Pablo Picasso, and the Navajos. Seeing the way these artists expressed themselves encouraged him to do the same. Pollock married Lee Krasner in 1945, and the two ended up moving to the countryside where Pollock continued his painting and Krasner supported him and did her own art as well. Krasner and Pollock were having a rough time with their marriage, and Pollock ended up having a few girlfriends. In 1956, Pollock was driving drunk with two passengers in his car. He was speeding and ended up crashing into two trees off the road. Pollock and one of the passengers died at the scene of the crash. And that is how Pollock's era came to an end. The art convergence was done in 1952. I feel this artwork is culturally significant because it was made during the time the U.S. was dealing with the Cold War and the aftermath of World War II and shows how war really is. The piece looks chaotic and busy and that is exactly how war is. War involves a lot of action, planning, moving, etc. and I feel this piece embodies that. This piece also, according to jacksonpollock.org, was the embodiment of free speech and freedom of expression. I feel that this piece showed that people have the freedom to create and make whatever art they want. They weren't restricted to just one form of art and could use their art to say what they wanted. And that is exactly what Pollock did in Convergence. He used his form of art, abstract expressionism, to express himself. Pollock's art was unique and when you saw his artwork, you put his face to it. Pollock did say that it seems to me that the modern painter cannot express his age, the airplane, the atom bomb, the radio, in the old forms of the Renaissance or any other past culture. Each age finds its own technique, and that is from Albright Knox Art Gallery. Pollock believed that the old forms could not capture the way artists felt about war, so he suggested that they use their own forms of art. Convergence is a collage of colors splattered on a canvas that created masterful shapes and lines that evoke emotions and attack the eye. With Pollock's brushstrokes, he was able to make handy use of colors, lines, textures, lights, and contrasting shapes. A quote from jacksonpollock.org. In his painting, Pollock uses a variety of colors. You can see he uses black, white, blue, red, and yellow, and the black paint seems to be in the background, which makes the colors pop even more. The black is dark, and the other colors look light opposed to it. The lighting of the whole artwork creates this balance between dark and light. The artwork isn't lit up too much or too little, so it feels balanced and makes it easier to see all the colors. To create this painting, Pollock used a technique called drip painting. He laid the canvas on the floor and dripped, poured, and splattered paint over it. Going back to the idea of the artwork showing war, I see the colors as being significant in their own way. I take the white and blue as representing airplanes flying and fighting through the air. The lines of those two colors look like they are the trail of clouds left behind by planes. The way the red looks more splattered reminds me of the way blood is shed during war. The lines of the red are thick and thin and just remind me of blood. The black looks like it is everywhere. This could be because war is dark and sorrowful and there isn't much light more, more than half the time. The black lines are different sizes and shapes and are so chaotic, like being out in the war field. Everyone is running around, shooting at the other side, bombs are going off, bodies are laying around, etc. Some areas have more black than others, and those areas, to me, would represent a bomb going off in the area. 
the yellow color would be like the mustard gas or other gases that were sometimes used during war. The lines of the yellow look cloudy, so it reminded me of that. Now for the artwork on the right. According to Tate Kids, Paul Nash was a British artist who was born in 1889 in London. He was most famous for his landscape paintings because of their abstract and surreal appearances. Nash was also a war artist during World War I and II. Even his war paintings were surreal and abstract. They also conveyed a certain sadness. The ArtStory.org tells of Nash's early, middle, and late life. He lived in Kensington, London with his father, mother, and two siblings. His father was a barrister and his mother was a Navy captain's daughter. Nash's mother was, mother's mental health was getting bad and his father did all he could to help, even moved to Buckinghamshire, but she ended up dying at an, 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 when Nash was very young. Nash wasn't good at school and he even failed the naval entrance exam. He then was told to try out art. He first went to Chelsea College of Art for two years, then went to London County School of Photo Engraving and Lithography. After that, he went to Slade School of Art for a year and finally returned home. There he continued to do his landscape art. He was very inspired by nature, especially trees at a young age. Since he was a war artist for both world wars, he would draw the events that would occur at the landscapes while he served. He would then paint these drawings. For these paintings, he became well known. He got into surrealism when he went to Paris with a friend and met Max Ernst and Pablo Picasso. By the time World War II came along, this time his art was much more abstract and captured a lot of aerial scenes. On July 11, 1946, Nash died in his sleep from heart failure because of his asthma. The Battle of Britain was done in 1941. I feel this artwork is culturally significant because it shows a piece of history in action and shows us that artists can express themselves in any way and we will still be able to determine the meaning and what is happening. Art doesn't have to just follow a certain set of principles or rules. It can literally be anything. In Nash's case, he made his art abstract and surreal. The battle going on in the painting is between the British and German air forces and shows the British being victorious. Nash's own description of the piece says, You can see the river winding from the town and across parched country down to the sea. Beyond, the shores of the continent. Above, the mountain cumulus concentrating at sunset after a hot, brilliant day. Across the spaces of sky, trails of airplanes, smoke tracks of dead or damaged machines falling, floating clouds, parachutes, balloons. Against the approaching twilight, new formation of Luftwaffe threatening, and that is from the Imperial War Museums. This piece, like Convergence, is also colorful. There are different shades of yellow, brown, blue, gray, black, and white. The subtle colors of yellow, brown, gray, and black really make the blue sky and white clouds stand out. That is where your focus goes right away, to the aerial scene. The white lines of the plain smoke look somewhat dreamlike in the way they are drawn in shape. It looks like a battle is going on because of the mix of white and black lines. The black lines are supposed to represent smoke from a plane being damaged and going down, and you can see all the black lines go downwards towards the water and other side of land. The lines of the river are curved and go from being thick to thin and then fan out into the water. This creates perspective in the art, making the art look somewhat more realistic. The same goes for how small the planes are that are approaching on the right side, and how the planes on the ground look bigger and more clear. The Imperial War Museum has two different images of the Battle of Britain. One has more vibrant colors and the other has more dull colors. This could be due to different lighting that hits the painting. The lighting of the vibrant colored version, which is the picture I chose, makes the painting pop out more and really keeps you fo your focus on the sky, while the dull colored version doesn't really pop and you are more focused on the painting as a whole. This shows that lighting can have a major effect on how a painting is interpreted and seen. Thank you.